if I'm a drug addict and I'm using crack cocaine, I know crack cocaine is killing me, brother. I know it's no good for me. But you coming into my house, taking away my crack, flushing it down the, down the toilet, you know what that's going to do? That's going to make me kill you. Now, you're doing it because you love me. I'm your brother. And you see I'm doing nothing but carrying myself to an early grade. But I'm sick, brother. So if you come in my house and take away my crack pipe and take away my drugs, I will kill you. Because this drug is the only way I'm able to get by. I do not have the discipline, the dedication, the control, or the willingness, the willpower to face my pain and fix my life. The only reason why I'm on the drugs in the first place is because I have unresolved personal issues that I don't have the dedication to fix. You can't make me do something I don't want to do. Just like you can't take reliable information about a race traitor and give it to black people. They don't want the truth. A definition of mental illness, a traditional definition of mental illness is a total dislocation from reality. Mentally ill people don't want the truth. They're trying to get away from it. They know their megachurch minister don't mean them any good. They know the megachurch minister ain't doing nothing in the neighborhood. They know these national black leaders ain't doing nothing but pimping us. They know this, but they don't care. They love living in an imaginary world because as long as they accept the lies as truth, they never got to get off their ass and do anything. Why do you think religions are so popular in the black community? It ain't because we're so spiritual. Yes, we're spiritual people, but that ain't why religion is popular. You want to know why religion and religious nationalist groups are so popular? Because they only ask two things of the membership. Religious groups and religious nationalist groups only ask two things of their membership. Give me your loyalty and give me your money. That's it. You don't have to roll up your sleeves. You ain't got to think. You ain't got to come out and work. You ain't got to build no institution. The only thing you got to do to be associated with this well-respected Negro group is to show up and give me your money. That's all I ask of you. Look at every religious group in history. All you got to do is believe. You don't have to achieve. Just believe. But when you talk about pan-Africanism, when you talk about true nationalism, you're talking about work. I don't just want you to come to a meeting and give me some money and believe in the ideology of Garveyism. Hell no, I want you to go to work. Which is why it is so difficult for us to get people to join and stick with our organization. Why does a Negro who suffer from racial inferiority disease want to join an organization that's telling him the only way he's going to fix his problem is to work? Isn't it a whole bunch, isn't it a lot easier to go across the street to the mega church and they're telling you that your problems are going to get fixed anyway just by believing and giving your money? Think about that now. You're dealing with mentally sick people who like to believe in lies. They don't want the truth because the truth is painful, and the truth requires that they act. Remember, good brother, knowledge comes with responsibility. Once you know, you now have a responsibility to do. Black people don't want to do a damn thing, so they would rather not know. If you tell me the schools are not going to teach my kids, and I know this to be a fact, now I got to teach them myself. I don't want to do that. So I would rather believe what the school is telling me because knowledge brings with it a responsibility, an obligation that black people don't want. Slaves don't want responsibility. So if you keep trying to make an unconscious people conscious before they are ready to be conscious, they will kill you.